In today's video, we're taking a look at how to install a bus bar for your solar system easy and simple. It's so easy, anyone could do everything that we use on the video. We're gonna leave a link on the description. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. That does help us out a lot, thank you. So you woke up today and notice you have too many connections on your battery terminal, or you're looking for better cable management, or an easier way to work on each individual part of your system. Don't worry, here at the Statterbox team, we've got your back. A train ride away, a bus, and then a little bit of walking, but a back is a back. And the first thing that we're gonna need other than yourself is the bus bar. In this particular case, we have the MoFez power distribution block bus bar with four 3-8 posts and six number eight screw terminals. According to the manufacturer, is rated for a max of 48 volts and 250 amps. And this particular one is a pair. You get the positive and negative bus bar. Red for positive, black for negative. And no matter the brand of bus bar that you have or the size, the technique will be the same. And now that we filled your brain with data, we're ready to start and because the last thing you want on a clear sunny day is to die or in organization day to ruin your system the first thing that we want to do is turn off our inverter if you have a switch that provides energy to your inverter we want to go ahead and turn that off next if you have a solar disconnect or solar breaker we want to switch that off if not you can always cover your solar panels and lastly we want to turn off the breaker or the switch that provides power from your battery to your charge controller and a pro tip you always want to do the charge controller last and when reinstalling you always want to provide the power to your charge controller first the first thing that we want to do is get the location where we're going to place our bus bar remember you want to take in consideration where your cables are going to meet also if you don't want to use additional wires or have to create or crimp new wires that's why taking the time on where you're going to place the bus bar is the best thing you can do you can always take a piece of paper create a diagram of your system and play around with the best location. A pro tip, always remember having a Watson to give you an extra hand always goes a long way. Now that we have our bus bars installed, the first thing that we're gonna do is remove our negative wire from our battery. Once our negative wire is removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove our positive wires from our battery. In our case, we have the wire that goes to the inverter, the wire that goes to the charge controller, and the wire that goes to the battery monitor shunt. In this particular case, we have a terminal fuse block which we're going to remove as well if you want to see how to install a battery shunt we'll leave links of our video on the description or how to install a system from scratch we'll also leave links on the description and now you've done it you broke your system no you didn't you just press pause on the game and now this particular step would all depend on how you have your system and how much space you have on your wall plywood or location if you're starting from scratch it's going to be a lot easier and our case because we have a fuse in between the inverter and the battery as well as a switch what we want to do is place our fuse in between the inverter and the bus bar and then place our switch in between the bus bar and the battery let's say like that if we want to work on the bus bar we can always switch it off to maintenance or to repair it now let's say that in your case just like ours all your negative connections are in the battery shunt we want to go ahead and remove all the connections from the battery shunt. If your connections were already on the negative terminal, then you can skip this step. In our case, we're also going to remove the battery shunt from our plywood wall to place it on a new location. So the first thing that we're going to do is place our fuse housing on its new location closer to the inverter. Then we're going to take the positive wire from our inverter and place it on the fuse. And because our wire is no longer going to be connected directly to the switch, we're going to have to make a little small wire to go in between the fuse and the bus bar. And to cut the wire, we're gonna use a heavy duty cable cutter, which can also be used to strip the wire. But when stripping big wire, what we like to use is this cable stripper from iCrimp. It can do from 12 gauge all the way to four aught gauge. And it's very easy to use. You just open it up, place it on the wire, twist it once or twice. Sometimes you can feel once it touches the copper inside the insulation, you stop, you'll see a score on the wire and you can just basically take the insulation and wiggle it off the wire using your beautiful strong hands and to crimp our lug on our wire we're using this 12 ton hydraulic crimping tool that can go from 8 gauge all the way up to 
for aught gauge. We'll leave links on the description. You can also check out our video on how to install a solar system for the first time. We have different ways on how to cut, crimp, and also how to place heat shrink tubing on wires and lugs. Now we're ready to install our fuse. And remember, a pro tip, once you feel it tight, it's good enough. You never want to over tighten and go from a small job to a big job. Always verify with your owner's manual or manufacturer's specs on specific torque for your particular system. But remember, here at the Statabox team, we like to do this the old school way with our eyes closed and both of them. And we say that because torque specs can vary between manufacturer and even on the same brand, different models. But a great pro tip that we do have, and this one's passed down generation to generation, lefty loosey, righty tidy. Now we're ready to connect our switch, which already has a wire that we pre-made and the wire size that we're using from our inverter to the bus bar is one aught gauge. And then from our bus bar to our battery, we're gonna use two aught gauge. And we do this because from our bus bar to our inverter, let's say it's a set amount of energy that we're gonna draw, but from our battery to our bus bar, depending on the connections you make, it can be higher. And in our case, it will be. And that's a hint for two future videos where one of them, we're gonna install a converter from 24 volts to 12 volts. And on another video, we're gonna install a fuse block. Now that our switch is connected, we're gonna go ahead and take our positive wire going from our charge controller and also place it on the bus bar. In this particular case, it's coming from a switch first, then to our bus bar. And now you've done it, grasshopper. We're one step closer to victory. We're gonna leave our positive wire from our battery shunt for last. We're gonna go ahead over to our negative bus bar and start doing some connections there. And we're gonna start with our negative wire coming from our inverter. And remember, once you feel it tight, that's good enough. Next, we're gonna take our negative wire coming from our charge controller and install it on the bus bar. And always remember, lefty loosey, righty tidy. And remember, on your system, you might have more positive connections and more negative connections, which you can go ahead and install. And also a pro tip, that's why verifying how many connections you have to have the appropriate size bus bar is always a good idea. Always remember preparation goes a long way. And we know you got this because you are the best. Now we're gonna install our battery shunt on its new location. And as you can see, it will be closer to our negative bus bar. This is going to make placing the connection on the battery shunt a lot easier. We're gonna go ahead and connect our last positive wire to our bus bar and that is the battery shunt positive wire. As you can see, we don't have to use the 3 8 post and for the small wire, we can use the number eight screw terminal. And always remember the ancient technique, passed down generation to generation, lefty loosey, righty tidy. And now you've done it. We finish with the positive bus bar. We can go ahead and place the cap that covers the bus bar and lets us live another day. And because the last thing you want on a clear sunny day is to smell barbecue on a non barbecue day. So placing the cover or having a cover is always a plus. We're gonna go ahead and place our data cable that goes from our shunt to our battery monitor screen. So the great thing about the bus bar is that we no longer have all our negative wires going to the battery shunt, but only one wire. So not only your overall system is gonna look a lot cleaner, but also your battery shunt as well. So this is a new small wire that we created from our negative bus bar to our battery battery shunt. And we're gonna make sure that we place that wire on the side where it says negative heat. So if you notice, it's still going to do the same function because on our other side, the negative B, that's going to go to the battery. So still everything has to go through the negative P side before it goes to your battery. And now that we foreshadowed the future, meaning not now, but later, which is now now, we're ready to install our negative wire to our battery. You know, Always remember, once you feel it tight, that's good enough. Now we're ready to install the other side of the wire on our negative P from our battery shunt. And to seal that one more victory, we can go ahead and place the cover for our negative bus bar. And as you notice, the caps and the cover are plastic. But we can say, talking from the future, we have noticed the battery shunt to be more accurate now that we have the bus bar. Just a few watts different, but we'll take it. And we can see this 
this because the regular recommendation for manufacturers and brands and gurus on the interwebs is that you don't want to have more than three connections on a terminal at the max four but always verify with your manufacturer owner's manual and once again we're one step closer to the end and now it has come to the final play of the game we're going to connect our positive wire coming from our switch that goes to the positive bus bar to our positive terminal on our battery we're going to start with our fuse block and then connect our wire at the top if you want to check out our video on how we went from a 12 volt system to a 24 volt system we'll leave links on the description and now you've done it you fix your system again it looks a lot cleaner it's more organized is more efficient it will be a lot easier to work with but most importantly you've done it you can pat yourself on the back for a job well done there is no bus bar you can install we can go ahead and turn on our charge controller first then our inverter and lastly our solar panel breaker don't forget if you like the video please give us a thumbs up that really helps if you have any questions place them in the comment section below either someone on the status box team or someone on the youtube community can help you out with an answer don't forget to subscribe follow us on social media thank you for watching and here's a link to our latest video